Welcome back to the Outdoor Minimalist YouTube channel. My name is Meg. I'm the author and host of Outdoor Minimalist, and today I will be reviewing the BioLite Camp Stove 2 Plus Complete Cook Kit. For the stove, I used it for four months living in my van, and during that time while I was on the road, it was during the months of December through March. So I had the pleasure of being in New England during December and part of January, and I got to use this in all weather conditions. <laughs> Because my van is a um, transit connect, it's a smaller van, and so there's no room to cook inside. And also, I don't think you should cook with an open flame inside a vehicle at any time. I used it outside strictly. I did bring it inside the van once, but we won't talk about that. Um, <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, this is a wood burning stove, which means that it uses strictly biofuel, like sticks, pine cones, leaves, dry grass, or the BioLite wood fuel pellets. And that is kind of like the primary sell for this stove is that you don't have to carry any fuel with you. So once you get the fire started inside, how it works is that this stove in particular uses a patented um, combustion technology to create a vortex and so that makes it very low on the production of smoke which is great um, and it also increases the heat inside to potentially boil water faster. BioLite claims that you can boil water in as little as 4.5 minutes. I will say that if you were to average it between different temperatures, weather conditions, and moisture that could be in your biofuel probably closer to eight to 10 minutes if you're boiling a full liter of water. And in the complete cook kit, it comes with everything you see here, including a charger, charging cord for the battery, which I do not have in front of me, but everything that's included is the canister, which is made from stainless steel, um, the battery, which I'll explain a little more in a moment, the cook grill, which I'll also explain a little more in a moment, and um, the kettle, which the kettle comes with, if you're someone that drinks coffee, you'll appreciate this, um, essentially a French press that packs down really small, is lightweight. And I really like the lid on this because it has like a little pour spout. And so if you're used to pouring water out of a canister like this, it usually spills everywhere and is really annoying. And so that was a really nice feature on this. And then the last thing that I'll mention that is included in the complete cook kit is this light, which you can plug into the battery. And so if you're cooking at night, then it's easier to see. I know most people will probably have a headlamp or a lantern. Um, and I'll be honest, I did not use this feature at all because I had a headlamp. Okay, so let's talk about more how the stove works because there are other um, wood burning or biofuel stoves on the market that are much lighter than this. I think this is a little over three pounds if you just have the stove, which is very heavy. Um, and so if you were to pack the stove and the kettle, it'd probably be closer, like over three pounds, maybe closer to four pounds. I didn't like look at the stats on that. So maybe I'll have to look that up. But the nice thing about it is that it all nests together. So when you are packing it, I usually pack this in one of their stuff sacks to put it inside the metal canister. That way it doesn't get all sooty and gross. And then this canister with the battery inside nests inside of the kettle with the lid on. To put the stove together, if it is a part, you have to make sure you put this wand through the little hole because the wand is what collects the heat and the energy because the battery exists to collect the heat that is produced from the fire and then it stores it inside the battery to run the fan. That is another thing that kind of sets it apart from other stoves on the market that are similar. I find that it is easy, one, to get the fire started and two, to keep the fire going because you have a fan and you can continually get oxygen to the fire. Okay, what next? Okay, so the battery you'll notice has an LED screen um, and there's three different lights. So the first one will light up red and that shows you the heat of the fire, which I find that 
like pretty useful when you want to boil water um, because you can try to get the heat um, up to the top and the higher the heat is obviously the faster you're going to be able to boil water and so if you do have the red heat line all the way to the top of the LED um, display that's when you're going to get it closer to a five minute boil time. The middle is the fan power. From my experiences it only really took um, the fan being at a middle setting or like the second setting in order to get the fire going and to like keep it keep it at a steady roar I guess and then the last light is the battery so how much battery is left inside battery power is left inside and it'll continually go as you are burning the fire like it'll, the battery will get higher and higher unless you're actively using it and there were a couple of times that I had my phone plugged into the battery while I was running the stove and that does deplete it a little bit faster. No, 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 no. If you plan to use the battery as like an external power bank, I will say it doesn't really store that much. It could charge my phone if it was all the way like completely charged to the top. It could charge my phone one time. Um, but then after that, it needed the fire or it needed to be plugged into the wall to charge again. And there needs to be enough battery to run the fan. Okay, so you can use any pot on top of this. I'm actually gonna get another pot. Um, so you can set it like this. It is recommended by BioLite that you always have the handles aligned with the battery because the way that this is set up it has a bit of a lip here to prevent the um, flame from going that direction and so this way if you have a stove like this or a pot like this um, the handles won't get too hot and on their kettle that they include in the complete cook kit they have a bit of rubber on the outside so you don't really want to melt that and so always align the handles with the battery. And I liked using this kettle, one, because it has a large volume. It can hold one and a half liters of water and it has the holes here. So it allows more airflow to the flame and it just produced a better boil time, cook time, and allowed me to keep the fire going a little bit easier. And if you're very careful, you can put tiny little sticks in these holes. <laughs> I don't think that's recommended. Usually I would take it off and put it in that way, but you could try it, I guess. If you get the complete cook kit, you will also get the grill, which is a cool feature. And I honestly haven't really used it that much. Um, this could be used as like a prep station. You can cut on it or you can put your meats and vegetables that you're going to grill. And these pieces come apart to make it easy to clean. So to put the grill on, you just extend the legs and it sits right, is this extended? Yeah. It sits right on top there and you can open this little flap um, that allows you to feed wood into the fire to continue to cook. Now that I've done a brief overview of the complete cook kit, what's included, how it works, etc. Let's talk about the things that I liked while I was using it. So one, it's fun to cook with a fire. So I enjoyed having to start a fire and I also enjoyed that it emitted heat. About the first four months of my trip, it was winter time. And so since I was cooking outside, it was nice that this was emitting heat. I could warm my hands while I was cooking or if I put it down by my feet, it warmed my legs and my feet. Um, you obviously don't necessarily like want to touch it, but since this battery is so secured on the bottom of the grill, I was able to move it around as needed if I needed like it to be more stable or something like that. I could move it without putting gloves on. The other things that I liked, which I already mentioned, I really like this pot. It was easy to clean, it's easy to eat out of, it's designed really well to work with this stove. And since I primarily boiled water for tea and cooking certain meals, it was very effective to pour it out. And because it has this um, rubber seal, it kept the heat in really well. I really liked using the biofuel pellets. Um, so if you're car camping, I would recommend bringing the pellets along at least to have a base to start the fire. And because even if you're using some type of hardwood that is really dry, the pellets just have a longer burn time. Let's talk about the things I didn't like so much. 
So number one, it is not really usable for backpacking or bike packing, anything where you want a lighter weight. Um, and that's primarily due to the battery. So I would recommend using this for different types of car camping, overlanding, um, or if you're setting up a base camp. Um, I have thought about using this for like short overnight or weekend trips, but I think in those instances, I would just opt to cook over a campfire instead of using the stove. The other thing that I didn't super love is that it does really require dry fuel um, because unlike a traditional campfire, it'll just snuff itself out once it's inside of here. And it's really easy. I did a lot of trial and error using this stove. It's really easy to pack it too tightly, to overpack it, and all of those things will put the flame out very, very easily. <laughs> and then you have to start all over again. And that can be kind of frustrating, especially if you've had a long day and you just want something warm to eat. The next thing that I didn't super love is that it doesn't work well in all weather conditions. So I would say that this is a fair weather stove. Um, you want to use it in environments where it's relatively dry and it there's decent temperatures. So I noticed once it got below 30 degrees, the stove itself didn't really function that well. I'm not sure if the fan was having issues at that temperature or it was just because the biofuel was also a little bit wet from snow. But I did notice that the boil time took much longer at lower temperatures. So I don't recommend using this in the winter time, even though it's nice and warm. Okay, the last thing that I'll mention that is not super great is that it's a little bit um, tedious to clean up because if you're using a traditional propane stove of some kind, there's not really a cleanup involved. You let it cool down, you can pack it up and move on. With this, you do need to let it cool down. It takes anywhere from two to five minutes. Sometimes there would still be live coals in there. So you either have to crush them completely um, or, or um, pour water on them, but never pour water into the stove. So always pour it out onto a patch of dirt or into a fire pit, pour water on it. And your other option would be to bury the, sto bury the coals, but never bury live coals. So there's just like a lot of steps involved, I think, to clean up the stove, which I think not very many people would love. Okay, so then let's talk about the general sustainability of the stove and durability. I think functionality wise, I kind of covered that pretty well. It is functional. I enjoyed using it. I foresee that I will continue to use it for car camping ventures. You should not bring it backpacking <laughs> unless you like to have heavier gear, you know, more power to you. But I think sustainability wise, BioLite itself is a very transparent company. They use quality materials. And if you go to their website, you'll see a lot of their not only environmental focuses when it comes to gear production, but also kind of like their humanitarian efforts. And they put um, a big focus on um, like helping illuminate the world, um, which will make sense, I guess, if you look at their website. But <laughs> so material wise, I think because they chose to use stainless steel for a lot of their materials, um, you can expect it to last quite a while. The one thing that I think I would have a question about is how long the battery will last. Because since it is a battery, there has a shorter lifespan than something like a stainless steel canister. I've had this stove for about a year and I used it every day for almost four months and it still is running really well. It hasn't slowed down. The battery life is about the same. And so in that span of longevity, I think it is decent. Um, but there are other pieces of equipment. They use relatively little plastic and the plastic that they do use is um, durable. Their sustainability score would probably fall around seven. I think some of their um, general um, product materials could be improved. I don't think that it is necessary to include as much plastic as they do in the complete cook kit. It would be nice to know a little bit more about the battery and if it has a separate warranty than the canister because that is something that would need to be replaced sooner. Um, yeah, but other than that, I think that is a stove worth checking out. I think before you are to invest in something like the BioLite Camp Stove 2 Plus Complete Cook Kit, you need to evaluate your intended use and frequency of use because if it's not something that 
you plan to use very often, I am not sure it is worth the investment. We're pirates. From the span up through, okay. If you liked this review and would like to see more, make sure you hit that like button. I don't know where it is on the screen, but you can find it. And you can also subscribe to stay up to date with new releases of our YouTube videos on the YouTube channel. If you want to stay up to date with podcast episodes that are released every Monday about various topics regarding sustainability in the outdoor industry, you can subscribe to our Spotify or Apple podcasts. If you want a nice clean package to know what's going on every single week, the easiest way to do that is to head over to theoutdoorminimalist.com and subscribe to our weekly newsletter. And together, we will create a better outdoor space as we recreate.